Today we're going to share with you, Tracy's going to share with you, uh, <laughs> how to make this striped confetti cake. Now, we're seeing this striped look pop up all over social media, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Really popular right now. Yeah, so. it's the hot cake trend. We know many of you are wondering how to do it. So I will, without further ado, I will let you walk us through this process. Okay, so this particular cake is a six by six size. You can do any size. Obviously you can make it four inches tall, you know, whatever you'd like to do. I did crumb coat this first, so I have that done. And I'm just going to get some icing on. So I will do that. And you used two six inch by three inch pans, right? I did, okay. yes. But you could Perfect. certainly tort it. You could use the two inch high pans, you know, whatever you've got at home. Great. And Tracy's currently working with our large icer tip number 789. There is a smooth edge to this tip and then there's also an edge with teeth. And so you want to make sure that you have the edge with teeth, the part being the part that's applied to your cake so that of course the smooth side is facing outward on your cake. Really helps just apply the icing all in one go, keeps it more of a consistent application of icing as you're going as well. I did two bags here instead of trying to, you know, fill the other one. So I'm just gonna get that little bit on the top there. We have lots of people tuning in from all over the world. We have um, someone from actually local, Northern Illinois. We have someone from Canada, somebody from Spain, somebody from Georgia, uh, somebody from the UK, and uh, Philadelphia. Awesome. Thank you everyone that's joining us from all over today. Heard that we have our neighbors in Northern Illinois watching, as well as someone from Spain, and then Georgia here in the US as well, so thanks again for watching. Um, if you do miss any of our Facebook Live episodes ever, you can always find them on our page. Just click on videos on the left hand side and you can access any of our previous Facebook Live videos. So now you're just working through smoothing it out. Yeah, I'm not going to be too yeah. particular with how smooth it is, but mm -hmm. um, you want it to be somewhat even. Okay. If you've got some spaces, you can always go back and add, so it's hard to tell right now what, what it's going to do when you get the comb on there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to quickly get a little bit of a straighter. And if anyone's wondering about the tool Tracy's using, that's actually our Wilton cake lifter, <laughs> um, which really, you know, comes in handy for lifting cakes, as the name implies, but also, I mean, just depending on personal preference, um, for this type of cake, I know Tracy, you were telling me that you prefer working with this one over mm -hmm. the icing smoother. Mm -hmm. Just kind so of when they're taller, taller yeah. I just feel a little better using the, this one. It covers more of the surface area. Yeah. But it's good. Really like, smoother totally works. I know everyone in the decorating room actually uses it too. So yeah, personal um, preference. Yeah, all the way. Can okay. you tell us again the tip that Tracy used for icing the cake earlier? Yes, those are large icing tip number seven eighty nine. So now. Trace is using a part of our three-piece comb set. So you can see that it actually has um, textured, it has teeth on the side, so you can have different textures here. And this really helps put, um, to fill in the stripes that we'll be doing, really gives it a nice, even, consistent look. So you have the even spacing through, you're not having to you know, do it by hand one color at a time. It really makes this so much easier and is a really great way to achieve this stripe technique. Yes. Okay, now you do, you are probably gonna have to go past a couple times. You're not gonna get it on the first shot. Okay. Um, but it should come together. So Be prepared to go over it a few times. Yeah. So depending on where you've got your pressure, you try to keep even pressure on, on you know, from the top to the bottom, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's a little tough, with, especially with these tall cakes. But. Can you tell us what kind of icing are we using today? Consistency? Yeah, this is the medium consistency buttercream that we're working with today. And would you say that you want your icing to be pretty freshly applied before you start using that comb? I would, okay. yes. Yeah, you don't want it to start to crust over or anything like that. Okay. We've got more people tuning in. We've got someone from Argentina, somebody from Jamestown, New York, Kentucky, um, Dubai, Ontario. Shout out to Dubai, Ontario, Argentina, 
New York, thanks for watching this afternoon. You are just happening to tune in. Um, Tracy here from the Wilton Decorating Room is walking us through how to make a striped confetti cake. Really focusing on the striped technique here, which is just popping up all over social media. It's really hot and popular trend in cake decorating right now. wanted to know what kind of pan that you use for the cake. For this cake, we used um, two six inch round pans that are three inches deep. Okay. And while Tracy's finishing up those last few steps, I want to show you what comes in the comb set here. So again, this is our three piece comb set and it's really neat because as you can tell, there's different designs and different teeth that will allow you to apply a different texture on your cake. So these are fantastic for um, just any design that you're wanting to do. And it's just kind of an added bonus that with this technique that's popped up, um, this comb, which we've already had, works really, really well for getting, achieving the striped effect that we'll be doing today. Which you can see here already on this cake that we practiced on earlier. Does your kid tell our audience where they could get um, a copy of our buttercream recipe? Yeah, if you're looking for our buttercream recipe and you'd like to make it from scratch, just go to wilton.com, type in buttercream in the search box, and it should be the first thing that pops up for you. We also have some different flavors of buttercream. Um, also, there's a high humidity buttercream icing recipe, which since we're in August, a lot of you might still need, depending on where you're at. And um, yeah, like I said, lots of different flavored recipes too, so be sure to check those out on wilton.com. for is a better defined um, area so you've got like the raised and then the indented mm -hmm. now unfortunately due to time I don't I would I would kind of play with this a little bit more to get it a little better mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna see if I can get it because um, you want to make sure that your stripe your, that your color is not going to you know bleed into the next color okay. so obviously with this one I took a little bit more time than I've got today to sure. To, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the in the couple minutes that we've got on this live, right. so let's see if I can go around this more. Yeah, see if this will. Tracy, would you know how much buttercream icing did you make for this cake? Um, I think it was about six cups. Six cups of buttercream. Got it. Right. Okay. I'm just gonna do this little spot here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and move on. So I just want you to get the idea of it and you'll definitely get the idea even though if the stripes are a little off, you'll still at least understand like what to do when you do it. Exactly. At home. Um, again, this, one, this is a little bit, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna move on. All right, so I've got some blue icing here. I'm actually gonna sit down for this part go just for because it. it's a little <laughs> easier to uh, get eye level. Um, so I just have some buttercream in a bag, blue color, and then I'm just going to pipe. I know it's probably hard for you to see what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to pipe the color. And this is a round tip number eight that Tracy's working with, and she used the royal blue icing color to get the shade of blue. And you can use a cut bag if you don't want to use a tip. You can certainly do that. Can you tell us what is the size of the cake and how many layers? So this is a two layer cake. We used two six inch round pans that are three inches deep. But yeah, it's just two layers. Get plenty of it with the three inch deep pan. We have a question from Brianna. Is it better to use gel for the coloring for this one or do you use the coloring? Question from Brianna on what coloring we used for um, the blue. Is it better to use the gel icing color or color right? And the answer is you can actually use either one. For this specific, um, like I said, shade of blue, specifically we use the royal blue icing color, but both the color right and the gel icing color are super concentrated. So you're going to get a really great vibrant color with either one and it's not going to thin out your icing. Um, one of the benefits I like to talk about with color right is that if you're trying to recreate the same color over and over and you want it to be, you know, that certain shade, you can recreate that over and over because it's using the drops with the liquid squeeze bottle system. But whatever your preference is, I'd say go with that one. Good question. 
And remember that we do have the link to this project in the description of this video. If you are joining us late, Tracy's working on making a striped confetti cake and you can always rewatch any of our videos from the beginning. If you ever tune in late, just click on videos on the left-hand side of our Facebook page and you can access any of our previous Facebook Live episodes. And if you're not already following us on Facebook, make sure to do so. That way you'll always be notified whenever we're live. Can you show again um, what Tracy used to make the lines? On sure, the yeah, let's go back to this icing comb set because I think it's really neat. So funny enough, we've had this product around for a while, but like I said, with this new stripe trend popping up, um, this comb really works perfectly for it. So it's a three-piece set. You'll get these all together. And as you can see, there's actually six different edges to choose from. So the, the teeth of each side of the comb have a different look going on. So that's just going to give you a different effect, a different texture on your cake. And then this is the one that Tracy worked with specifically. So they're spaced out just right so that you can, again, do that stripe look on your cake. And she used a tip number eight, which fits just perfectly in between the gaps of the teeth on that comb there. Can you tell us again what cake pan sizes was used for the cake? We are all about the cake pan sizes today. <laughs> so this lovely cake here is a two layer cake. We used two six inch round cake pans that are three inches deep. So it's just two layers. There's icing in the middle. Um, again, six inches across, three inches deep. And I'll also chat about these sprinkles too because I know Tracy's halfway through our cake here. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time to fill that in and go around. Um, but we'll be adding these later on and I just wanted to share some of these because they're just such fun bright colors and they were probably some of my favorite new additions to um, our Wilton Sprinkle collection this year. So you can find these on Wilton.com. This is part of our limited edition line and they're really great bright bold colors. This is a six cell um, variety of sprinkles here and you can see that um, with this one, which I think Tracy will be using later, we have a mix of some sugar pearls non-pareils, jimmies, assorted jimmies in different colors, and then also these larger non-pareils. And then these sprinkle tackle boxes, how cute are these? We know that you're all still enjoying making your own sprinkle mixes, combining the different shapes, the different textures, the different colors even, um, but these are just so adorable. They will fit perfectly in your kitchen pantry, or your kitchen drawer. Um, I actually have a friend that used to work here that she legit has a sprinkle drawer in her kitchen for her cake decorating. Shout out to Stephanie if you happen to catch this later. And um, yeah, these are just really great because like I said, you can combine the different variety of colors and the sizes. So you can find all of these on Wilton.com. And I think we might, we'll be able to link either in the comments or the description of this video if that's something you're looking for later. Um, can we see again the tip that Tracy is using right now? Yeah. We'll reach over here and grab that. Okay, so um, this is the round tip number eight that Tracy's working mm -hmm. with. In the master it's, tip set, you can find that in the master tip. Yep, part of the master tip set. So in the round tip family, as you can tell, just getting past like medium size before we get into the larger size round tips. And then for this blue color, um, she used the royal blue gel icing color to get this tint of blue. Question from Jackie, how thick should the icing be before you use the comb? Okay, so we have a question from Jackie, how thick should the icing be before you use the comb? So probably a little thicker than what you'd normally ice a cake in. Okay. Um, but now just to, to reiterate what I was saying earlier, so because I was trying to get this done a little quicker than normal, this is this is basically what you want to look for. So see how they're nice and, and smooth? I've got some areas that are a little, um, you know, jag it a little bit with the white. So we're gonna see how those pull across <laughs> because usually if you, you know, the, the nicer your white is, the the better your stripe is gonna be. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's really wanna... helpful to know what to look for mm -hmm. because I mean, if you've never done this before. Yeah, so you definitely wanna see, you can see the nicer, um, you know, marks that I made and then the ones that kind of got stuck a little bit. <laughs> but I think everything looks really good. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so we will move this out of the way. Okay. Susie said it's gonna be a good baby shower cake. Good, very good idea for yeah, baby shower cake. It'd be super cute. Birthday, anything really. I love this technique because you can. I would love to do love a. Um, I would love to do a Halloween cake with like a candy corn. Yeah, the candy corn colors would mm -hmm. be really cute as well. 
Can we show again the big tip, seven, eight, nine, that was missing at the beginning? Yes. Here, and we'll also be sharing another tip shortly, too. Okay. And, oh, actually, before so I, I do that, yeah, I yep. want you to share the tip of what you're doing sure. here the okay, water. So what I've got going on over here is sometimes your icing can have a little bit of air bubbles. So I like to do a hot water technique where it just heats up the um, spatula. It doesn't really add water to the cake. So that's all I'm doing here. I've got it here. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's shallow. I'm not going to stick my hand in it or anything like that. And it's not boiling. It's just kind of a hot water, um, you know, to... So kind of just smooth it all out. Yeah. And we mentioned earlier, this is actually our wilting cake lifter, um, but for this size of cake, Tracy's found it works really well for smoothing it. So that's another use if you happen to have it. Yeah. And again, you could use the icing smoother if you have that. Mm -hmm. This okay. looks amazing, Tracy. It looks okay. so good. <laughs> <laughs> so the good thing is too, um, like let's say you've got some spots that have kind of bled into the other. It sounds crazy, but the more times you go over this cake, the cleaner it becomes, which sounds like yes. you would start to kind of mess it up, but it actually, um, so while this looks really nice now, I'm actually gonna go past one more just because I got some, some, some areas here where the white and the blue didn't quite connect. Mm -hmm. So you just wanna, I can see if I can get that. Yeah, if I hadn't seen Tracy <laughs> like run through that yesterday, I would not have believed you at yeah. all. Because there was one part where a little bit of blue had bled onto the white, and you kept going over it, mm -hmm. and I thought it was going to get worse. Yeah. But it pulled the blue away, <laughs> actually. and the white was more white. So yeah, that is a very good tip to know. So let me see what happens here. Oh, and speaking of tips, somebody asked a moment ago, what was the large icing tip we used? It was this tip 789. So you want to make sure that you put the side with the teeth against your cake so that you have the smooth portion facing outward on your cake. And then I'm cleaning the uh, special off every time. I don't want to put the mm -hmm. you know icing back onto it. Right. Um, and I'm just gonna get that one spot right there, and I think that's. I it. think we're yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'll clean the top off just a bit. And that'll be the point where it's like step away yes. before you keep <laughs> <laughs> messing with it more. This looks really good. Deanna wants to know when you transport this cake to its party, do you freeze it or leave it at normal temperature? Okay, good question on transporting the cake. Do you freeze it before bringing it somewhere or would you um, leave it at room temperature? I would probably room temperature. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to do this one little spot and then I am done. Okay, I don't know if you saw that earlier, but it was a little bit of a break and it, it kind of cleaned that up. So. Awesome. Yeah. So there you Looks go. Looks so good. Okay, so now we just have to decorate the top. Yes, and actually so, instead of smoothing this over, I'm just going to grab that one and we'll just do the top. I'll just grab this Oh, this one here? Okay, so we'll yeah. Just switch it out and then that way I don't have to spend the time to... But normally you'd take a spatula and, you know, clean that smooth the top. Okay. Yeah. Scooch this one over here. Okay, so now we're just going to add some rosettes to the top. And I've got some uh, white icing that I tinted with the uh, gel color pink. Or not gel color, the icing color pink. And I've got a tip 1M, which is a large star. I'm just going to put some um, some higher rosettes on here. So I'm going to do that. Tina wants to know, do you need sticks in a cake for this size? No, you definitely do not need to doll this cake. Um, it's only two layers, and they're each three inches tall. And it's a six inch wide cake, so they're they're thick enough and sturdy enough that they can just stack one on top of another with an icing dam in the middle. That's where your mom said it's a pretty cake. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta shout it from my mom, Tracy. <laughs> She's loving this cake. <laughs> I love this shade of pink. It's really, really pretty. Yeah, that'd be nice. Alright, I think I can squeeze two more in there. Looks good. Okay. okay. Now we just need those sprinkles, those sprinkles to finish it off. Here. This Let's is the confetti this. part of the cake, our striped confetti cake. <laughs> so yeah, this is the mix that has has some jimmies, has some nonpareils, has some larger size nonpareils, or you can kind of consider them sugar pearls. They're such a nice addition and the color complements it really well. Yeah, I like the yellow on there. Oh, and another thing I wanted to, to um, 
suggest too when you do any kind of the any of these striped cakes I would suggest always doing them on a board instead of on a and you can always move it to a plate afterwards like if you've got that on a six inch board I would still put it on like a, another board to um, smooth it out and then go ahead and move that to your uh, serving plates because it's gonna be really difficult to get that striped if you've got a lip on your mm -hmm. You know if you've got any kind of indent or lip on your plate, yeah. you're better off doing it on a board beforehand So that's just a little good tip to know <laughs> something I wanted to Talk about okay. Does that look good in the front? I can't tell. Yeah, okay, we're good yes. I said That would also be a fun gender reveal cake it would. I was thinking Ooh. the same thing. Yeah, if you're <laughs> announcing, are we having a board? Are we having a girl? <laughs> this cake would work really well for that, too. <laughs> awesome. Well, Tracy, thank you so much. This cake yes. turned out absolutely amazing. Yes. And like I said, we know that you all have been asking, how do you do this stripe technique? Because yes. it's popping up everywhere in social. Um, really appreciate you showing us. And we will see all of you next Tuesday at our normal time of 2.30 Central. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.